welcome back to my channel. I'm just going to be talking today about prong collars and e-collars. Um, just actually in my dining room because there's a huge thunderstorm outside right now, but I really wanted to film this video for you guys. Um, so I know there's been some requests to talk about um, some of these tools, and I know that they're controversial, but I really just wanted to give you guys the truth about these tools, um, how to use these tools, the benefits of these tools, um, and so forth. So let's get started. So I have a prong collar here. Um, the prong collar is an amazing tool, especially when you're just getting started. Um, it's to help the dog understand directions um, in terms of like leash pressure. Um, so you're going to teach everything that you're going to teach the dog is going to be on the prong collar first. The e-collar comes in after once they understand it. So like once you teach the dog sit, then you would layer on the e-collar. Um, and I'll talk to you guys about that in a bit. So these are prong collars. Um, you can see that basically it just unclips. It clips back in. You can take off and add uh, loops depending on the size of your dog's neck. Um, these come in three sizes. There's a 1.75, 2.25, and 3.25. This one is a 2.25, um, which is perfect for the size of Leela's neck. 1.75 is something you would use on like a really small dog, um, like maybe 15 pounds, something like that. Um, most dogs are good on the 2.25. I've really only seen people use 3.25 in rare situations on huge dogs. Like we're talking, you know, 150 pounds plus. So like 90% of your dogs are going to be on this size, um, which is a 2.25. Now this one is a Herm Springer. These are the only prong collars. Um, this is the only prong collar that I use, and it is um, the number one prong collar brand that pretty much all dog trainers use, good dog trainers, that is. The prong collars that you see at PetSmart, um, any of those sort of commercial box stores, they're not good, they're crap. Some of them are pointy at the end, they rest easy, they're just not good. Um, this one is the best one, um, and it's about $30 Canadian. They used to sell them on Amazon, I haven't seen them lately because they're sold out, but just search Herm Springer prong collar and that's the only prong collar that you should be buying. Um, and these prong collars are just really soft um, around the edges. They do not hurt. They apply um, even pressure and they just make it really clear for the dog. Um, so I'm going to put it on Leela and show you. Okay guys, so I have the prong collar on Leela. Sit. Good. Um, so I have the prong collar on Leela. When you're using a prong collar, you want to make sure that it's sitting as high up on the neck as possible. Um, it usually stays up a lot better when you have like huskies, German shepherds, anything with like long hair, it tends to stay up better. Sometimes with Leela, it falls down a little bit. So sometimes throughout the walk, I just make sure that it's raised. You want it to be basically right below the ears um, for the best, um, so that you get the best results. Um, so when it comes to the leash and attaching it, you want to make sure that it's just on the side of the dog, um, that you'll be walking. So if I'm, she's on my left, you see, I just have the leash attached here. So if I need to pop, I can just pop. So if I'm walking, da, 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 and I need to pop, I would just pop like that. Um, so with the prong collar, you never want to apply constant pressure. The whole point of the prong um, is that you're popping. Um, so you know your, your severity or your strength in pops will obviously be different depending on what your dog is doing. Um, <laughs> are you tired? She wants to lie down. So if you're outside and there's a distraction, let's say she's looking at something, you just want her attention, you know, you could just gently pop. See, I just gently popped and she got back up into a better sit. Um, if we're walking um, and there's, you know, reactivity, your pop obviously has to be firmer. Um, so you have to gauge, you know, that, but just remember that the prong collar should always be as high up on the dog's neck as possible. Um, and you want to make sure that, you know, you can fit one finger through, um, hers is a tiny bit loose, but when I take away a link, it's too tight. Um, so it's better to just be a tiny bit loose than too tight, um, because then you can cause the dog some discomfort. Um, there's videos out there, you know, all sorts of bullshit, um, that you'll see of, you know, prong collars causing damage to dog's necks and, and, you know, um, scars and skin missing and indentations. Um, you know, if you leave the prong collar on 24-7 uh, and tie up the dog outside to a tree, yeah, it can cause, you know, that kind of irritation. Um, so, yeah, it's all bullshit. Um, it's people just trying to cause, you know, propaganda. Um, but this is a training tool, you know. This tool should not be on when you're not working with your dog. So this isn't a collar that you would 
put your dog into the crate with um, and leave your dog in the crate or leave your dog at home. This should only be used when you're working with your dog, um, you know, when you're doing training with your dog um, and so forth. But if you're going to put your dog in the crate or so forth, um, take it off. It's not, you know, uh, every an all day long um, collar that the dog would wear. So I think this tool is great. No. So I just popped her because she was licking her feet and see she's fine. Um, so yeah, so the inside is just meant to apply, you know, even pressure around the dog's neck. Um, the little quote spikies are not spikies. They're actually round and soft. So it doesn't hurt. You can see guys like Leela wears this pretty often. and She has no irritation, um, no indentations, no scars, no red marks, no blood. There's nothing around her neck. Um, so it's a really, you know, gentle tool. It's more gentle than the flat buckle collar. You know, you often see dogs pulling on flat buckle collars and they're gasping for air because they're choking themselves because it's putting pressure on the trachea. Whereas this is not putting pressure on the trachea at all. It sits up really high and it gives you the best control because you have control over their head. Um, the lower it goes, the less control you have because the, the neck gets stronger and stronger, you know, as, as you go down. So I think that this tool is amazing. It is amazing. It's great when you're starting out training your dog. Um, you know, you, when you're teaching your dog how to walk on a leash, basically, you know, you walk, 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 dog gets ahead of you, make a sudden turn, dog feels pressure and they start to learn, oh, I have to pay attention or I get this pop. Does it hurt? No. Is it uncomfortable? Maybe. Um, it's not uncomfortable. It's just more that it, it's clear. It provides clarity for the dogs so that they understand what you want. Can you pop hard enough where it becomes uncomfortable? Sure, you can. Will it kill or hurt your dog? No, your dog will be fine. Um, you know, whatever you need to do to kind of gain control, Again, in most cases, like you can even see, like I'm applying pressure while she's in the sit and she, she's fine. She doesn't care. It doesn't bother her. It doesn't hurt her. Um, so it's a great, great training tool um, for your dog. So now I'm going to grab the e-collar. Uh, I'm going to show you guys and talk about a little bit about what that looks like. Good girl. So this is the e-collar that I use. Good girl. It's e-collar technologies. It's the only e-collar that I used. It's, it's the number one um, e-collar used by pretty much every trainer. Um, the e-collars that you buy at um, the pet shop, those are garbage. They're bullshit. Um, don't buy those. Don't use them. Um, the number one, a few issues about those collars is, yeah, they're cheap, but they're not going to help you train your dog. Um, so the issues about those e-collars is that number one, they have limited levels. So this has a hundred levels. Those ones usually go up to at most 15 levels and you would say, oh yeah, but one to 15 is a lot. It's not level one and 15. There's not so much of a far difference. The other thing is that their stems are not consistent. So like a level five might feel different today and then tomorrow it would feel different again. And they're much sharper. Um, so they're not gentle. This one has a hundred levels. Um, you know, when you're teaching your dog something, um, for example, if I'm teaching Leela something, I'm on level five. If you put this on yourself and start pressing buttons, um, it doesn't hurt. So here I can put it on my neck and I can put it on, um, a two. I don't feel anything Four, I don't feel anything. And it just keeps going. Um, so usually dogs like we as humans normally won't feel it till about a 10. And even then it's not painful. It's really just like a poke. Um, so if I can't even feel it on a five and, and she feels it as a working level and it's not painful. Um, it's just something that she feels. So it's clear, right? So when you're teaching a heel, basically you would put pressure on very low, direct them into the position. Once they're in position, you let go. So they learn, ah, so I turn this stem off when I'm in this position. It's just so crystal clear for them. And that's why it's so quick and fast to teach them what you want with the e-collar. So, you know, let's say you're teaching your dog sit. You're not going to just put this on your dog, start pressing buttons and expect the dog to know how to sit. It doesn't work that way. The dog has to already be taught sit with treats, with prong and so forth. Once they know sit, this is a layering tool. And this is what will allow you to get that dog into that off leash world, right? So you would tell the dog sit, you would turn on the stem very low. They sit once they, their bum hits the ground, you release pressure. So it's called like an escape system. Basically it's teaching them how to get rid of that sensation and it makes it clear what action they have to do to get it. So this is an amazing, amazing tool. Um, it's off leash. Uh, it's amazing for off leash. If you want your dog to be 
100% off-leash reliable, this is the only way. Um, no matter what, no matter what kind of cookies or steak or whatever you have, you're never going to be able to have 100% reliability without this tool. The reason is because this tool can also give consequences. It's not just, you know, for teaching things at low levels. It's also there um, to teach your dog, you know, behaviors that you don't want. So obviously there is a way to teach recall. It is done on low levels, but then you get to the stage um, in your advanced training where when and if your dog blows you off and doesn't recall, they're taught to understand what this means. And at that point, you would apply a high correction for not coming back to you. Um, so you don't just put this on your dog, let the dog run away, you start pressing buttons and they come back to you. It actually works the opposite. If you do that, your dog will get scared because they're not gonna understand why they're getting the sensation. And a lot of times the dog just runs even further. They're trying to get away from whatever it is that's bugging them. A properly trained dog will understand when they feel that I gotta come back to my owner. So that's why this is so good for recall. Um, so, you know, when I recall Leela, I don't have to use this. She will recall. But if she ever decides to blow me off, if something is more interesting, I can hit her at a high level. She knows exactly what it means and she'll come flying back to me because she knows this means come to me. It, you know, so because she understands it, she's not afraid of it. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like speeding, right? Like you don't speed because you know that if you speed and get caught, there will be a consequence. But are you fearful? Are you scared? You know, are you nervous all the time? What if? No, because you know, as long as you don't speed, you won't get pulled over. So you don't live in fear of constantly being pulled over. You just obey the rules because you don't want that consequence. So same with, with, the, with this, right? The dog obeys. They don't want that consequence. They know what the consequence is for such and such behavior. But this tool is really amazing. Um, definitely, you know, um, find a balanced trainer to help you. Um, also, right now, a lot of dog trainers have created online um, guides where you can literally learn how to train your dog all online through virtual, um, like online learning. Um, many, many people are training their dogs like that now. So you don't need to even work with somebody in person. There's a lot of great trainers who are offering courses. They're not expensive. Like this one trainer I know, he's offering like $200. You get an online virtual session and you can learn how to train your dog all by yourself. Is it hard work? Yes. Is there dedication? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. So if you want your dog, um, you know, to be off leash trained, um, this is definitely the only way to go about it. Um, if you want hundred percent reliability, you know, it just, it, it's, it, it's crazy to me that there's so much controversy around these tools. Like so many people, you know, are willing to, you know, rather let their dog run across the road, get hit by a car, than give them a correction, which is like a second of an uncomfortable, you know, sensation. Being hit by a car and dying or being severely injured is a lot more seconds of uncomfortable sensations than, you know, just a tap on the e-collar. So I hate all the bullshit that's out there about these tools. A lot of it comes from, you know, the force free community, people who have no idea what they're talking about. Um, they think that, you know, people are just slapping on e-collars on dogs and, and, you know, slamming them at a hundred for any tiny infraction, you know, but that's not the case. Um, people think that, you know, e-collars are the lazy way of training, but it's not. They're actually, you know, there's a proper way to train the dog. Um, it takes a lot of work to train with the e-collar. Um, you're teaching the dog, you know, a, a new communication. So um, the fact that people think that it's a lazy way or that these are abusive, it just, it drives me crazy because it's not true. Um, and it comes from people who have no experience with these tools. And I can tell you that there's a lot of trainers out there, you know, in the force-free positive community who are posting videos, you know, cookie cookies, this, that, and the other, and talking bad about these tools. And then they go home to their own dogs and use these tools. Um, because these tools, you know, sometimes they're controversial. It doesn't sell, right? So some of the top trainers on YouTube who have like 4 million viewers, they go home and use these tools on their own dogs. But then to you, they're going to tell you not to do it and just use, you know, cookies and treats. So there's so many lies out there um, in the dog training community. It's really, really aggravating. Um, you know, I can tell you that if you want a well-balanced dog, if you want a dog that you can take off leash, um, you know, a dog to live a great life with, you're going to need these tools. Um, you know, in the olden days, you know why there were so many well-behaved dogs back then? Like if you think 30, 40 years ago, people didn't have dog trainers. They just smacked them with newspapers or slippers and right. That's an aversive too. Um, but now we've come so far in technology where we have these tools so we don't have to smack our dogs with newspapers and slippers. Um, but yet there's, you know, so much, you know, controversy about it. So, um, you know, do I look like someone who wants to abuse my dog? No, like I love Leela to pieces. You guys know that. So I decided that I want to use these tools because I want a well-behaved Doberman. You know, the worst thing is to have a Doberman of all breeds, you know, any power breed. 
um, bite someone, do something bad, and then who will suffer? You know, the dog's life will get taken away. So would I rather make sure that Leela knows the rules, get stimmed here and there, um, you know, if she does something bad? Absolutely, because that's how I keep her safe. That's how I make sure that I always have control over her. Um, and that's how I make sure that she can live the best life. And that's how I can make sure that she can explore the world, be off leash. And I don't need to worry, you know, um, she's not a liability because I've done all the work to train her and make sure that I have full control. So definitely, you know, look into prong collar, e-collar, definitely amazing tools, get a balanced trainer or, or get some virtual sessions online. It's not hard to use once you get the hang of it. It really does become second nature. When I'm walking, I always just have it in my hand. My f I don't even have to look at it. My fingers kind of know, you know, where the buttons are. I'm able to roll up, roll down with this. Um, so it's an amazing tool, um, specifically off leash. If you want off leash, there's no way to get 100% without the e-collar. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, comment below if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.